Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. Today we're going to be installing a new downpipe in this rainwater gutter. Right about here. I need to do this because whenever we get heavy rain, the gutter overflows along this section. This happens because all three of these areas of my roof are currently flowing into the same gutter, which then flows this way and empties into a single downpipe. I'm hoping that adding a second downpipe here will fix this problem. Let's start by marking around the gutter pop with a pencil. Then I'll mark the cut lines about 10mm inside that outline. If you're going to use an angle grinder around glass windows, it's a really good idea to cover them first. You can probably guess how I learned this. Now I'll use this angle grinder to cut the hole in the gutter. This grinder's too big to make the end cuts in the gutter, so I'll use this smaller one instead. The small grinder still hit the fascia board, so we'll finish the cuts with this hacksaw. I fitted the blade backwards to cut on the pull stroke this time. All house roof gutters are always full of dirt and dust. These gutters are 50 years old now, and they'll need replacement pretty soon. This is a homemade scraper made from an old file. I'll use it to remove the paint from around the hole. Now I'll drill holes in the corners of the gutter pop. Then we can mark the location of the first hole in the gutter and drill it. We'll use this roof and gutter silicon sealant for the pop. If your caulking gun keeps pushing out silicon when you've finished a seam, just push this lever to release the pressure from the piston. Now we can install the pop and secure it with a pop rivet. Once the first rivet's secure, we can drill and rivet the remaining holes. I needed to use this smaller rivet gun for the last two holes. These pop rivets have a hole running through them, so we need to inject some silicon into each rivet to seal it. I'll use a paper towel to wipe off the excess silicon. These metal downpipes are tapered. One end's 45mm, the other's 50 The narrow end is also marked with this dimple. This taper allows you to join multiple pieces of downpipe together for extra length. I'd normally mark the downpipe with a pencil, because the pencil marks are easy to erase when we're finished. But for this video I'll use a black marker, because it's easier to see. You should always use the white end of the downpipe at the top. This way your joints will have less chance of leaking. So this will be the direction of water flow through our downpipe. Now we need to measure from the gutter to the bottom of the fascia board, plus a 50mm allowance for the downpipe. 150mm should be enough. Our first bend needs to be cut through the back side of the downpipe, so let's start by marking our 150mm. We also need lines down both sides of the downpipe. Now because this downpipe's 50mm thick, and our ruler is about 25mm wide, we can take advantage of that to mark our next two lines. On the downstream side of the joint, you just need to join the two lines together diagonally. The upstream side's marked a little differently. Start by marking another line about 10mm inside this line. Then join that line diagonally to... Wait, wait, that's a mistake. What you really need to do is mark the upstream side like this. Now we need to cut out this area. I find it best to tie the metal pipe to my sawhorse before cutting it. You can also use sheet metal snips for this job, but I prefer to use an angle grinder. The upstream side of the joint needs to fold inside the downstream side, so you might need to bend the edges a little with pliers to make it fit. Now we can untie the pipe, then drill a hole through both layers of the joint. Next, we'll secure the joint with a pop rivet. Drill and rivet the other side in the same way. Next we need to measure the distance from the wall to the gutter pop. I'm going to transfer that distance to the floor. Then I'll line up the downpipe with the wall and transfer our mark to the pipe. 
Our first bend was cut into the back of the downpipe, so make sure that the second bend's cut into the front. If we've done this right, that downpipe should fit perfectly. Now we can bend a downpipe bracket into shape. Then we can use the bracket to mark some hole locations in the wall, drill the holes, hammer in some wall plugs, then attach the downpipe with screws. For the next step I need to remove some of the decking boards. I'm planning to repair and paint these boards over the next few months to match the other deck. I'm going to use this PVC pipe underneath the deck to carry the water from the downpipe to this drain. The drain leads to this stormwater pit. The stormwater pit outlet has a filter screen on it so that leaves and dirt won't end up blocking our underground pipes. I'll need to cut the pipe in half so that I can feed it underneath the deck. Then I'll fit the two halves together using this connector. We'll use this PVC adapter and a 90 degree elbow at the other end of the pipe. This wooden rail was a little too close to the wall, so I needed to chisel out a 6mm rebate to allow the extra piece of steel downpipe to fit. Once that was done, I reattached the upper section of the downpipe and then refitted all the decking boards. Now we can put the garden hose into the roof gutter and see if this system works. There's a small leak from the upper bend in the downpipe, so I'll put some silicon on that later once it's dry. But we do have water flowing into the stormwater pit, so it looks like this job's a success. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.